Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen at Twistworks. I'm Kathy Borgerson, and you are my ver first Zoom teaching experience and kind of my first uh, cooking teaching experience. Looks like from the names on the screen here, I know a lot of you, but if you don't, just a little bit about me and uh, my cooking background is um, I, my background is more in the teaching and counseling field. And in about 2008, I was counseling and teaching at our schools here and decided that I needed a little break. And during that break, I decided I wanted to start a business and also cook more. So I started a little cafe and did that for about a year. It was called the Sunflower Cafe. And then for a few reasons, I decided that um, the cafe was not the direction I wanted to go, but cooking was. So I asked my friend Callie Levette if she would like to cater. We decided to start catering. We read a bunch of books and figured out how to run a catering business. And since then we've been doing small parties, big parties, weddings, nonprofits. And so basically I am a cook, I'm not a chef. I've taught myself a lot of things and I hope that we learned something about meatballs today. I decided on meatballs because they are so versatile. They're fun. You can like get your technique down and you can basically make them into any type of a meal that you want. So um, Deidre and Gina did send out the email that had the recipe for today's Greek meatballs with also some ideas for variations. And we're going to just go through the Greek meatballs. Um, I've done some of the work ahead. So it kind of, we're not at a place where you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'll tell, I'm just gonna kind of go through the recipe, tell you what I'm doing and kind of show you something up close. If you have a question, please do type it in and Gina will be able to read the questions and relay them onto me and we'll kind of cook and talk and we'll make meatballs. So I'm just gonna start out and I hope you all have the recipe because it'd be easier if you're looking at it, but if not, I'll just um, kind of read through the instructions and show you and tell you what I'm doing. So I have all of my ingredients out here on the table because it's always easier to make a recipe and make it flow smoothly and get through it if you have everything out and you're not having to run around and look for things. So it says, heat a, heat a large skillet to medium, add olive oil and let it heat until it is slightly shimmering. Add the onions and cook for one to two minutes and then add the garlic. So a medium garlic clove, to me, I'm gonna hold it up there, mm. is just about like that. I don't buy fresh garlic as often as I should, but we buy this at the store at Hank's. It's Christopher Ranch garlic, peeled garlic cloves, and we find that they're just as good. So one medium yellow onion, finely minced, and some recipes call for cooking your onion first and some just call to throw the raw onion in. And we just find that the more you cook your ingredients, whether it's an onion or meats, the more searing you add and the more flavor it brings out. So minced, and I don't know what all of your background is in cooking. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the terminology while I'm working through this. And if you have questions or you want something clarified, please do just let Gina know, let me know, and we'll answer a question. So there's chopping, there's dicing, and there's mincing. And chopping, if you're chopping a vegetable, would pretty much be about the size of your thumbnail. And dicing would be about half that size. And mincing is just a fine, fine chop. Like, so when you're cutting your onion, you just mince it into little teeny pieces so that it doesn't overwhelm the meatball with a big bite of onion, but you have all of the flavor. And so when you have your onion pretty much cut, your one onion minced up, then that's when I would turn on the pan on the stove and it says to turn it on to medium, medium high. So you turn it on. And so I put my pan on the stove and I've turned it on the medium and I wait for just about 30 seconds until the pan is heating up before I add my oil because then the oil heats quickly, heats evenly and that's just how I do it. I guess I don't really know why I do it. So heat your pan up a little bit, add your oil 
And I add, for this recipe, I don't think it says, but I add about one to two tablespoons of oil. And when it says to shimmering, some people get what shimmering means. If you don't cook a lot, all oil looks shiny. Thank you. All oil kind of looks shiny, but shimmering just means that when you pull it, pour it in, it just kind of gloves in. And as it heats up, it starts to become really liquid. And so if you move your pan around a little bit, it starts to look shiny actually. So if you've never really looked at oil, turn your pan on medium, put in your oil and just watch it a little bit. And you don't wanna get it too hot because your oil will burn and that would make a really bad taste for your food. So when it looks all shimmery, you take your minced onions and I'm just taking, I guess you probably can't see them, but minced is just, yeah. it's if your thumbnail is your chop, you just take it, half it would be a dice and then just chop it a little bit more and that's kind of a mince. So put in your onions, they'll sizzle a little bit. You don't want them to burn, but you want them to definitely get a little flavor and color. And so it says your recipe to cook them for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half and then add your garlic. And so I'm taking my garlic cloves and also mincing those. And you don't usually want to add your garlic in with your onions because if garlic gets too cooked or burned, it gets really bitter. So if you wait until your onions are cooked through a little more, then you take your onions, stir them around, and they'll start to look translucent. So the whiteness is gone and they're starting to have a little more clear look to them. And you dump in your garlic. And I am really good at burning garlic. So whenever I'm working with garlic, I stand right by my pan and I just keep stirring the onions, the garlic, whatever the vegetables I have are around. And really what you want from the garlic is to take out the bitter raw flavor and just have it start to soften and let it mellow out a little bit. So it doesn't have to be really, really cooked. You just want it to mellow out. So you would cook those for, you know, another minute probably. And when they're done, I have some that I already cooked and I'm just going to bring them up close. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Oh, there it is. So they're going to be kind of not caramelized, but looking like they're ready to caramelize. So they're going to be a little bit browned and just look yummy like you could eat them just like that so you cook these ahead of time because you cook them first because then you put them in a bowl to cool off and then they're not hot when you add them to your meat and your spices so these were sitting aside they're cooled off already i'm just going to go ahead and dump them into a mixing bowl so for this you just have a nice medium-sized mixing bowl that would hold probably about 16 cups so you just put your onions in the bottom, your onions and your garlic, and then we're just gonna go through the rest of the ingredient list and I'm gonna chop a few things and zest a few things and we will just add things to the bowl. So the next, it says add onions, cook for one to two minutes. Just to do transfer the onions and garlic to the bowl to cool, they're cool. You set your skillet aside for when you pan fry your meatballs because you want all that nice flavor from the onions and the garlic. Then you start adding things. So the first thing it says is to crumble the ground beef and lamb or pork apart with your hands. So I'm using two thirds beef and one third pork. And so when it says crumble it apart with your hands, you just take your meat that you've got down at Hanks or the supermarket. And one of the things about meatballs is you don't want them to be tough. You want them to be tender, you want them to be juicy. So overworking your meat breaks it down, mushes it up, and what you want is a meatball with kind of some chunks of meat in there still mixed with all your spices and your flavors so that as it bakes, the flavor comes out and the meat kind of holds its shape. So you just take it and see if you, like you take your piece of meat and you just kind of break some pieces off gently with your thumbs and your fingers and get it all into your bowl. Then it says crumble in your beef lamb or your meats, along with one egg, fresh mint, spices, salt, and pepper. And it doesn't say a specific amount of salt and pepper because it's really easy to over salt when you have 
pork and meats and other things you're working with. So I just add a little salt and pepper now, which would mean probably even a quarter teaspoon salt and a half teaspoon pepper. Because later, always before I cook my meatballs, I do a little test and I turn on the pan before I form my meatballs and I cook one like a little hamburger patty, a mini patty in the pan so that you can see if it has all the right flavors. Because it's really disappointing to get your meatballs in the oven and then have realize that, oh, they needed more salt, they needed more pepper, some extra spice. So put in a little salt, a little pepper, and then we're just gonna go through one by one and add one whole egg. And for the egg, because you don't want to overmix, I always just craft my egg into a bowl and mix it up really good first. I do that with a fork. That's, it just needs to be a nice mix to get the yolk and the whites kind of all mixed together. You don't need to use a hand mixer. You don't need anything special. And then I just dump that over the meat. Next, for the mint, you just take your whole mint leaves. It just says to chop your mint up, which just means a rough chop. And so I just take my mint. Can you see that now? So you just take all your mint leaves and I just hold them in my hand and use my knife and kind of just guide them through my knife and chop them kind of like you would mince your onion. So you don't want big, huge pieces, but it's gonna all cook together. So the flavor is gonna be delicious, hopefully, even with a big piece of mint. So you have about a quarter cup of mint. Sprinkle that over your meat. So you're just putting everything into the bowl. And then your spices are one tablespoon of ground coriander. And so for me, like if you have your spices and they've got those little holes in the top and it's every time you try to pour them out, I just usually get rid of those tops. And then you can just one tablespoon of that coriander. Can you guys see okay? Nod your head. <laughs> I was just laughing with Gina because I've never taught a cooking class before. And I was just remembering watching classes on TV with Rachel Ray or some of those great cooks that look so natural. And then also their bloopers from their olden days. And I was like, I'm going to be a blooper. So thank you for being very patient today and just watching. And please ask questions whenever you have questions. So coriander, a teaspoon of dried oregano. And for people who cook a lot, you really probably know your flavors. I know that I love oregano in any of my meatballs. So the recipe calls for one, but you can add a little extra because you don't want this to taste like a boring hamburger. You want it to be like, yum, that's a Greek meatball. So add a little flavor. You don't want to over salt, but oregano, mint, a little extra onion, garlic is not going to hurt. So oregano, and then we have a teaspoon of ground cumin. Mm. And I love cumin too. So mm. it's another thing that whenever I'm cooking something Greek or Mediterranean or anything with beans, I throw in a little bit of extra cumin and it brings all the flavors out. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And don't, don't go overboard on cinnamon or nutmeg, in my opinion, because they can be really strong. You just want that hint and you want somebody to say, wow, what is that? That's a really good flavor, but you don't want them to go, oh my gosh, that's cinnamon. cinnamon. And then nutmeg, I love the whole nutmeg cloves. You can buy ground nutmeg already. It is probably almost as good. Um, it gets stale a lot quicker in your cabinet. So if you buy the whole nutmeg nuts, little nuts, you can get them at Glover Street. You can just get a couple there. They last forever. So if you're zesting them, you can just zest a little bit. The zester, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a little teeny grater and you do peels, you do lemon zest, you do lime zest, and I always zest my nutmeg. So zest in your one quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg. And then the 
recipe says to add one tablespoon lemon zest. And so I find that one lemon usually gives me about one teaspoon of lemon zest. So that means three teaspoons is a tablespoon. Instead of having to zest it all under the counter, try to pick it up with your fingers, I just, I'm like, okay, one tablespoon lemon zest, three lemons. So take your zester right over the bowl, zest it in. And this is gonna take just a second. I meant to zest ahead of time. It's gonna take me about a minute. So if anybody does have a question, I'm gonna Question. I'm going to try to change one thing. Just bear with me one second while she's zesting, please. Oh, yeah, why does it say that? Can you see us right now? Still? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Do you see the little gallery and speaker view in the upper right hand corner? Yes, I'm on speaker view. And what I see is MedHow at home. I see your logo. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, it's because Maybe okay. I need to just give you host uh, capability. That's what I'll do. But I won't be able to admit anybody or do anything. Okay, you want to try that? Yeah. Here we go. Second, guys. A little technical moment here. Just a little commercial. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep zesting. <laughs> She's zesting. <laughs> You can just grab a cup of coffee or use the bathroom. Remember to buy a zester if you don't have one. And remember to zest ahead. <laughs> can you see it now? No. Really? You don't have the gallery speaker view up in the upper right? Yes, but I am on speaker view right now, and it's your logo. Oh, that's weird. It's not. It's not Kathy. We're trying to get a bigger picture here of for Kathy. So, um, okay, we're going back to gallery view. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're done zesting, yay. <laughs> now it's time to mix your meatballs. And if you did get the recipe ahead of time and you read through, there's two different ways that you can cook meatballs. No matter what kind of a meatball you're making, one of the things, when I first started meatballs, I thought they were a terrible pain because I always thought that you had to sear them on the stove and it made a big greasy mess and it took a long time and you had to do a few batches of them. And then I realized that you can stick them in a hot oven and your meat and the greases kind of form that same searing on the outside. So if you mm. cook meatballs in a 400 degree oven, all you need to do is spray your pan, make your meatballs and put them in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes. It depends on the size of the meatball, but you don't have to do the stove method. So. Kind of for fun, we did the stove method a little earlier this morning and we made some small meatballs and we seared them. So I'm gonna show you that kind of quickly here. And then we're gonna get some meatballs for them and put them in the oven. And then we will show you what it looks like when it's done. So mixing your meatballs, like I said, you don't wanna over mix because it gets tough. We forgot a step, a very important step. Okay. This is your first blooper moment with me. Oh. So having, Meatballs, everybody thinks of breadcrumbs or bread in meatballs. And while the bread is really important because it helps to bind the meat together, if you're just using dry breadcrumbs, I've found that it can make your meatballs a little bit soggy in texture or just kind of taste bready on the inside. So one of the things I've learned from reading and practicing is that to make the breadcrumbs, like it says in the recipe, you just take a piece of toast and you're, you're not going to end up with crumbs. You take a piece of bread, put it in the toaster. When it pops out, it's just normal looking toast. You just break it into some chunks and you soak it in milk. It can be non-fat milk, it can be whole milk, whatever. But the milk doesn't make it watery and runny, just kind of soaks in nicely. So you take your bread, take your toast, and I broke my toast into chunks like this. Just have a little dish. There's not a certain amount of milk, just enough to cover it. And just turn it a few times and push on your bread. And when it's soaked with milk, you'll know. It maybe takes 30 seconds. So push it around, push it around. And then when it feels like it's soggy, you'll know it's ready to come out. You don't want all that liquid in your meatballs. So you take it and you just pick it up and you just wring it out, just like you would wring out your wash rag or anything that's wet. You squeeze your bread and get the excess milk out. 
I thought this was a crazy idea the first time I did yeah. it. I thought it would make sogginess. I thought that you needed the dried breadcrumbs to work with the moisture and the grease in the eggs. And come to find out, it is, in my opinion, one of the keys to making a tender meatball. So just like you think you need the egg for moisture, you don't want too much egg because the proteins and the wetness cook differently with your meat. You want just enough egg and soggy bread to bind everything together. So you squeeze out all the milk, pull the bread apart over the top of your mixture, and then you just kind of take your hands, and this is the fun part about meatballs, you get to get your hands in there and you get to feel what you're doing, and you kind of just push around with your fingers and your thumbs gently so that you're getting all the spices evenly distributed, all the meat, because you kind of want every bite to have the same amount of flavor. So just smashing the heck out of it, you just take your fingers and your thumbs, mix it around, make sure you get all those onions and garlic from the bottom of the bowl mixed in. And it might seem like your meatballs are a little wet, like they're gonna fall apart, but they usually don't. So that's just lovely. You can look at all of the flavors, the greens, the mint, the herbs. And then, can you bring it up here? Really? Yeah, I'll bring it up and Gina's asked me to bring it up and show kind of what it looks like. So I'm gonna bring it up and so when you're mm. done, where's the camera? Yeah. So you can't really see that, but it's not worked into a paste. There's still some chunks of meat. There's, you know, maybe a little meat where there might not be. Can you do that, Gina? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I wish you could see this up close. It looks like- Kind of squishy. Yeah, kind of squishy, but not all mushed together. So got that. If you're going to bake them in the oven, on the, all you need is uh, any kind of a baking pan, a 13 by nine pan works really good for this whole recipe. I just use a little cooking spray, spray the bottom of the pan just so you don't have a sticky mess when you're done and trying to clean up. And then when it says a heaping two tablespoon meatball, you can either just take about two heaping teaspoon, tablespoons in your hand, or I love to use like your cookie baller, your Very dough baller. Idea. Anytime you're doing anything like this, it makes them all kind of more uniform in size and it just makes it easy and fun kind of to scoop, scoop. And it's like ice cream. So you scoop up mm. a heaping two tablespoons and it makes just a nice loose ball. And that's the fun thing about meatballs is they don't have to be a perfect sphere. You just see all the yummy meaty goodness and all the flavors in there. So if you're doing the baked, I would say do the heaping two tablespoons, bake them on 400, like it says for about 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, because they are big, they're gonna be seared and brown on the outside and break one open because you wanna make sure that they're cooked all the way through before you take them out. So that's the one method, baking them at 400. And the other method is frying them, rolling them in flour and frying them on the stove. So I'm just gonna do a couple of those to show you. And to do those, you would take about half the amount. So one heaping tablespoon, you would roll it around just to make a nice loose ball. Do all of your rolling first. It's much easier for me when I'm cooking to do all of one step and then move on to the next step. So I'm just gonna form three of them today and I'm going to turn on the same pan that you cooked your onions and your garlic in earlier. If there's a lot of extra oil in there, get rid of most of it, but your pan should just have a little bit of oil in it. So mine was pretty dry. And since I'm going to roll the meatballs in flour to make a nice crisp coating on the outside, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil because it just seems like I need some more. So turn your pan on, let it heat up again for just a minute or two maybe a minute, medium heat. And while your pan is heating, if you have all your meatballs all rolled and they're out on a tray or on your counter or a cutting board, you can take them and roll them in flour. So I just have flour that I dumped into a little pan. Anytime I do anything in breading or coating, I like to make sure that every 
layer or every time I cook something or add something, it has a little flavor. So you can just roll them in plain flour and you might not have a lot of taste. You'll get the nice seared brown coating, but I added a little salt and a little pepper in my flour. So that means if you have say a quarter cup of flour, you would add two dashes of salt, two dashes of pepper, just a little flavor. So then you roll lightly. You don't want to smash flour into it. You just roll it around, shake off any excess. I'm going to do that with my three meatballs. And my oil is starting to shimmer. It looks like it's hot enough. If you just put things into a cool pan when the oil isn't hot, your food will just soak in the oil and then it will taste a little greasy or a little oily. So make sure your pan is hot. Swish around your oil so the whole pan is coated. And then just set in, you probably can't see this, but when you set the meatballs, you can't see this, sorry. When you set the meatballs in, you will hear them sizzling a little bit and you will see them bubbling and sizzling right around the bottom where they're cooking. So this says to, your recipe says, cook them over medium and it does take about 10 minutes. And sometimes I think I can walk away from my meatballs while they're searing or something on the stove, but really when you're trying to coat them and cook them evenly on all sides, you kind of need to be right there so that you're watching them and turning them. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming. So take your meatballs, put them in. I stand by, it says with a slotted spoon or a spatula, but I use my tongs because it's really easy to just turn a meatball that way. And they like to get away. It's <laughs> Meatballs aren't always wanting to turn evenly like you think they should. So eat them over medium spaghetti. and just kind of turn them evenly so that the outsides are nice and brown and crispy looking. And what they'll look like when they're done are more like you can kind of see the brownness. They almost look, where's the camera? Oh, yeah. They almost look black, but they're just a nice crispy brown on the outside, all sides. So just keep turning them around until they have that look. And then I always make sure that I have enough meatballs that I can break one open and make sure they're cooked all the way through. And that did take me just about 10 minutes when I did it earlier today to make these. So you cook them. And we're just going to pretend they're done, and that's what they look like. So I'm going to turn those off. And to make the sauce, the, the lemon sauce that goes along with the fried meatballs, just, it's super simple. You use the same pan that you just cooked your meatballs in. And because it's got some of the flour and the grease mixture there, you just take your meatballs out and you move on. And it says to mix your lemon juice, your one and a quarter cups chicken broth and your egg yolk. So you take a cup and a quarter chicken broth and I just make that, I'm not sure what you use, but these are our favorite work when we cater. It's the Better for Bouillon brand. And with this, if you're making soups or something, you don't have to make your broth ahead of time. You can just take a glob and throw it in and then taste it until it's the right flavor. With this, we just, I took a cup and a quarter of hot water and mixed it in and it's your least expensive, best flavored broth. And then you take your egg, and again, just calls for the egg yolk. So if you can, save your egg whites, use them for something else, make a meringue cake, always fun. You take your egg yolk, and it says to whisk them all together. So the easiest way is to always whisk your egg yolk first, and then squeeze your lemon juice. And so for any of you who are still hand squeezing lemons, and you don't have one of these little lemon juicers. These are amazing. And so take your lemon, cut it in half. And the funny thing about these is you would think you just set it in so that it's sitting with the, the scoop side into the scoop. You put it with the flat side down and you get so much more lemon juice. So you take it, squeeze it into your egg yolk, get all your lemon juice in with that egg yolk, do it kind of quickly so it doesn't start to curdle, mix it together and then the broth. And we're not going to go through the whole time it takes. We've already been doing this for 35 minutes. I bet you're ready to be done. So mix your egg yolk in with your lemon and then take your cup and a quarter of broth, whisk it all together. Your meatballs are out of the pan. You're using the same pan. You just dump your broth, egg, and lemon into the pan. You put your meatballs back into the pan 
and you let them cook for five or six minutes and you come out with a sauce that isn't a real thick sauce, but it is, let me get a spoon and show you what it looks like. I think I can do it, Jean. Okay. So your meatballs are just gonna cook in the sauce and I like to just turn them over a couple times so that they're nice and saucy. The sauce when you're done is kind of just a thickened, nice mm, soft that sauce. Great. So that's, you know, you can let them sit on the stove for five, six, seven minutes. It all thickens up and you have your meatballs in your sauce. The sauce is delicious over rice or if you've made something else, a noodle or orzo, spreading that sauce over is really good. So that's what your meatballs with sauce will look like. And we also made some of the other meatballs earlier today and they have been in the oven for a bit. And when they come out, they, like I said, you don't need to do the frying. You, they come out and I'm gonna pick this one up here. They're nice and browned on the outside. They're really caramelized looking and your meatballs are done. They're tender on the inside. They're crispy on the outside. So you can take your meatballs, you can eat them straight. You can have some tzatziki, you can have sauces. That's meatballs. So. Would you ever make a sauce for the baked ones? Yeah, well, so what we like to do with the baked ones is you can also make, there's lots of easy ways to do. When you put them in the oven and they take 20 minutes, you can leave them in for about 10 minutes. They'll start to sear on the outside. And then if you just even take a can or a can of fresh tomatoes and mix a few of the spices, a little cumin, a little salt, a little pepper, a little oregano, mix it in, just pour them over the meatballs. Mm. They're not gonna get soggy. They're just gonna bake in that sauce and then it all okay. cooks together. So you can make a sauce, you can have them with the tzatziki sauce, cucumber, dill sauce. Yeah. Nice. Any other questions on that, Gina? When do I get to eat some? <laughs> Whenever you're ready. <laughs> no. Okay, so when I started and Gina asked me to maybe do a class and I didn't know what to cook and then I thought meatballs because I love meatballs, but they really are versatile, like I said. So on the recipe, like it said, you can make them into any flavor you want. You can make, I gave three other types of recipe or types of flavors to do with Italian, Asian, Thai, teriyaki. So basically, like I said, you just take out your group of, one group of spices and replace them with the spices or flavorings that I put there. And it's anything, you can go all over the world with a meatball. Any flavors you want to put in there makes it a little more fun. That's meatballs. Great. I have a question. Yeah. Would do you ever just use all ground beef, or do you usually mix them? Yeah. So uh, the lamb we and choose, and like when you read recipes, some people use lamb, some people use pork. We just like the beef because I like just a more simple flavor that you can add add flavor to. Okay. I lamb is too strong for me. Callie okay. loves lamb, so when we're doing meatballs with Callie, there's usually some lamb involved. <laughs> um, I. Italian, I've decided to use two thirds ground beef and one third pork because it just does add a little bit of a different richness and yeah. a little bit of another fat that just makes it a little more flavorful. So you can okay. make whatever combination you want. You can also make chicken meatballs with ground chicken. Um, you have to play with those a little because ground chicken is really moist, but um, hmm. you can make meatballs out of any uh, meats. Uh, let's see, there's a couple of questions here. Okay, oh, yeah. there's a question. If you use ground turkey or chicken instead of beef, what other meat would you use with it? What I would just, when I've made them in the past with just ground, I get the turkey store ground turkey from the store. I use that and then I kind of have in the back of my mind what the texture is that I want it to be. So while ground chicken is a little more wet, I would maybe add in, um, a little extra egg yolk and a little extra of the soaked bread, the soaked toast, okay. just to hold it all together. And just know that they're going to be softer when they cook, but you don't need to add necessarily another meat to them. Okay. okay. Is a good um, free substitute for breadcrumbs? You know, I don't know specifically because we, when we have gluten-free recipes, we have to really go out and like look into them. We try to make things gluten-free. I would suggest there are some good gluten-free breads. And so all you would have to do or all you need to do is get a loaf of your bread. And I would say toast it, 
or put it in the oven in cubes and kind of just cook it on a low heat until it's like good and crusty and then smash it or throw it in a food processor and make breadcrumbs. Like that's, I don't know about a gluten-free breadcrumb. So if you find one, great, but breadcrumbs are really in, make them into toast and then just smash them up. Try it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone's wondering, do you roll the baked meatballs in flour? before? No, go, no. we do not roll because, uh, and why I don't is because when you're rolling, when you roll them in flour, the oil and the heat of the pan sears them on all sides and it there's nothing to really sear the outside in the oven so the meat does well on its own because the fats the heat is all over in your oven and it's the fats are searing themselves but the flour it makes it a little more gummy if you just stick them in the in the oven okay. uh, and everyone just wants the recipe Yay. again and okay. fantastic i i had no idea yeah. Versatile, wonderful. Yeah, so meatballs are fun. And if you ever, like I see a lot of names on here and I know some of you are really good cooks. So if you ever wanna talk cooking, let me know. I love to talk cooking. I love to learn all the time. And if you're ever down at Twistworks, um, we're here, Callie and I are here every Thursday doing our new personal meal thing. So stop in and say hi and tell me you saw the class and love to meet you.